What's up, everybody? Welcome into a, another edition of Black and Gold Brothers with my CU brother, Charles Johnson. I am Chad Brown, and we are going to get you prepared for the Rocky Mountain Showdown, CU and CSU. Right off the bat, my man, has there been a more important Rocky Mountain Showdown for CU? You know, you don't really get credit for it, winning. And you lose, you get beat down because you lost the little brother. That's how it's perceived. Not to take anything away from uh, CSU's program and what they're trying to build and do. There are big news coming down today that they will be joining uh, the Pac-12. So kudos to to our uh, our little brothers up north. <laughs> uh, so that's good news. But before we go there, Chad, can I yeah. can I clean some things up, man? Because I owe I owe our listeners, our viewers. Uh, and myself, quite frankly, uh, an apology. And I want to take just a few minutes, if you don't mind, man. I mean, I don't mind. It's, it's, okay. we, we, are, we are brothers. My show, your show, our show. Do, okay. do your thing, bro. Appreciate you, man. X, X, you cool with that, X? Okay. Excellent. All right. X, X gave us the thumbs up. So here's the deal. I came on this show, what was it, Sunday? And we, uh, we talked about, we had a post-mortem uh, after the Nebraska game. Uh, and I allowed you to set a tone that was not really in liking or in kind with uh, my sober feelings. I was in my emotional feelings. I um, gave an impression of the program that probably wasn't um, accurate. Uh, I was listening to loved ones, my dear friends, those of whom I watched the game with, people I trust and know very well. Uh, and I uh, I didn't present the case, I think, in a sober way. Like most people I hear on radio in the local market, um, you certainly was in your feelings, but it's not, it wasn't real. It wasn't accurate. It wasn't uh, commensurate with the actual state of play or state of things up in Boulder. And so I want to take a second just to correct the record. Yes, the outcome of the game certainly was um, not to our liking. 28-10, uh, a first half that was abysmal, an offensive uh, production, particularly from a running, from a rushing perspective, that was, uh, that was not very good at all. We know that that's a Nebraska team that's built from the outside, from the inside out. I think we may have mentioned that. While CU was a team that's built from the outside in. Uh, and I think both are a product of what each coach uh, presented or was presented when they got to their respective stops. Last year, Nebraska could not keep up with our strength. As a result, we boat raced them. This year, we couldn't. It, be, it became the type of game that played to Nebraska's strength. It's inside out approach. They were just better than us up front on both sides of the ball. We lose a football game. Now, here's the deal. That's the bad news. And we've talked about that at nauseum, and I've heard it all week. Here's the reality. We surrendered really 14 points to that offense. We gave them a pick six, and we had a pick that went right through a linebacker's hand, ends up in a Nebraska Cornhusker hand that, that was tipped. Got it. We shut this in two games we played this year. We've given up six points in the second half. Defense have obviously made real adjustments at halftime to do what it needed to do in the second half of each game. I don't want to hear this Nebraska put, took their foot off the gas. There's no Nebraska team in the history of this game that will take their foot off the gas to prevent us from being embarrassed. That's garbage. And so what I see is a team that's one and one that I predicted will be, I said four and one, I think, by the end of the month, three and two at worst, but four and one. I see a team that's right in line with what I predicted they will be at, at the end of the season, six or seven wins. And so for all the panic, for all the hysteria, I want to just give a sober analysis of what's actually taking place. Here's the last point I'll make. This has become a referendum of the head coach and not a sober analysis of what's actually happening on the football field. So let's let this thing play out before we, you know, 
get in, you know, in our emotional state. Like we get too emotional. Ah, ah, see, they love us. Oh my God, we suck. No, let's just chill out a little bit and let this thing play out. Thank you, Chad, for indulging. Okay, all right. Well, Black and Gold Brothers is brought to you by our friend Pasta J. Pasta, see, Pasta J would understand where I'm yes, coming. Pasta J would understand that. Absolutely. Um, I did have some Lock and Cold whiskey last night, knowing you were probably going to kick something like you just kicked for the last three or four minutes. I had to have a little glass last night just to prepare myself for what was going to come today. And I got to thank my friends at Journey Spice. They always make my food at home better and more delicious. You can find them at Amazon. Use the 20 touchdown code to get 20% off at checkout on Amazon.com. As soon as this podcast is over, I'm going there and get me some of that seasoning, man. You yeah, man. It's the hell out of that, man. I got to yeah. have some. Everything's better with Journey Spice. And here's the thing. I'm a flavor freak. So sometimes you get a spice blend and salt is in it. So you can't go too heavy with it because mm. your food will be too salty. Mm. Journey Spice puts no salt in their blends. So you can go as flavorful as you want. Me being a flavor freak, my, sometimes my meat may be coated in spices that I can salt and taste after. So love it for many, many reasons. But definitely check them out. Hit them up on Amazon.com. Get 20% off with the code 20 touchdown. Okay. I appreciate all that you said there. And that is a nice sober stating of the facts. But within that, some things were missed. Some things were were glossed over. Um, so, you'll, so you'll tell me. Yes. And folks who are enjoying this podcast probably know that recently you ran for a political office. <laughs> and <laughs> sounded like some, the- <laughs> some of your political office uh, <laughs> attempts to spin and twist the facts just a bit came up there. Those things you said, there are some truthful elements to them, but also there's some truthful elements on the other side. I think when our country builds someone up, there's always going to be in a fire underneath just waiting to tear that person down. And so Coach Prime is a target for that. Yep. When you come in with the opening press conference, the opening meeting with the team and your Louis luggage and all the things that have been said since then, you know, and talk of playoff bursts and conference championships. When you barely beat a lower division foe and you lose to a longtime rival as decidedly as that loss was, there's going to be anger. There's going to be pushback Um, and not just from the Buff faithful, but nationally. Buff's faithful and uh, alumni and all that. Sometimes they don't know what believe, to believe. And oftentimes in life, we believe the first thing we hear, in which we shouldn't. I just would challenge you to be more responsible with your reporting. And uh, I never wanted to get personal. So when it gets personal, you got to really think about that. We weren't raised like that. We weren't brought up like that. We were brought up to love that neighbor as much as we can. Now let's continue. Let's get to the good you stuff. Know, the most respected folks in college football media are predicting the end of Coach Prime. So while I think that is all a step too far, um, and I think your assessment brings some sobriety back to the conversation, um, this football team does not feel anything remotely like what we were sold they would be. And I think that's where the disconnect is. Mm -hmm. While you and I can look at this from a football perspective, offensive lines always take time to come together. Um, you have a new offensive coordinator. I guess he he coordinated some games last year, but first time this year really implementing his total plan. That takes time to round it. So there's all these pieces that are going to take time. And to your point, neither one of us said this was going to be a 10-win football team. So all that is true. But I think when we are sold something, because let's face it, Coach Prime is a marketer of the program, of the, his players in the program, of himself. When he sells people things and the reality falls short, it's very easy not just to blame him, but to cast aspersions upon the entire program. Um, You know, I have gotten numerous text messages this week about when can I call Rick George and tell them to make you, Chad Brown, the head football coach? It's like, whoa, whoa, I ain't never been a college coach. I never even coached high school for a full season. But I appreciate it. You're one of the smartest guys I know. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the 
the hopeful optimism that I could do this, but let's give the guy who's at it a little bit of time here. <clears throat> we are two games into get into year two. There needs to be a bit of a reset, but I will go back to what with the question or the statement that I started this show with. I cannot think of a Rocky Mountain showdown that was more important to the buffs than this particular one. And the three victories that you got, because I went back and looked at the old record, and the three victories that I got, you weren't there for the 92 one. I wasn't there for the 87 victory. But three and three, three and oh for you, three and oh for me. We were expected to win those games. We were favored. There was momentum all was on our side. Expectations were on our side. They were truly the little brother. But if we go back to just last year, the Buffs needed a remarkable drive by Shador Sanders to bring this game back and tie it up. Mm -hmm. There was all kinds of back and forth between the two head coaches. There was some dirty play on the field. CSU is going to show up with revenge on their mind. And to that point, some CSU players talked about, we should have murdered them guys. We are coming for revenge. We'll see how far Instagram followers get them. We owe them one. And that's just something that's been sitting on everybody you know, mine since we came back from break. You know, we owe them. And we walked away from that game, you know, as, you know, we kind of left it all on the field. I don't feel like we left it all on the field because we should have murdered them guys. And, you know, they came out with that attitude as they were on top of the world. And this ain't no Cinderella story, so we're coming for revenge. Yeah, they came out with that attitude and Thought it was going to be a cakewalk. They saw the reports, 27 and a half points or whatever it was. Um, and they got a rude, rude awakening real quick. And I think it goes to show that uh, the hype, the media train, all that, it only gets you so far at the end of the day. You have to line up 11 guys against our 11 guys, and we'll find out who wants it more. And we'll see how far uh, Instagram followers gets them. So they are just talking, just, just talking shit. Yeah. The confidence in them after the ass kicking they got from Texas is a bit remarkable. But at the same time, I think they have focused and, and made this game their, I don't know, gold letter game or green letter game on their schedule with revenge in mind. So the Buffs have work to do on the field, but they're also taking on an opponent that is coming in with, quote unquote, extra motivation. Well, Chad, that's never been, there's, there's nothing different there. There's no news there. That's always been the case. They've always come in with extra motivation. You mentioned the three wins that uh, on the team that I played on when we beat Colorado State. I will remind you, in 1988, we played up in Fort Collins, and we barely escaped with the win. We were heavy favorites. They always fight us hard. We are, in, in, and again, that's no different this year. All the bravado and all the talking, I mean, just like when you hear from CU, uh, listen, the football game is played on the field. I'm not certain how, you know, what, what, what they're so confident about given what's taking place on the field this year. But we'll see. We'll see it unfold. I agree with you. The stakes are extremely high. And for this game, it always is. Colorado State has nothing to lose in this game. They're going to come in and... Uh, when they lose, they were supposed to. Um, and it's a bowl game for them if they win. And so that's just the reality we come into this game with. I'm also mindful of how you described CU's opening two games. And it's part and parcel to the point that I was making about the irrationality of a fan base. I get it. Totally get it. But there is a reality that underlies all that. Uh, and it's not just as simple as you know, we like to put it. We know better. We know better. We know the uh, the time it takes to sustain a, a program. So just wanted to m mention off the bat, this is a big game, to your point. It's a very big game for CU. I feel good about our chances in going in and, and taking care of our business. It's a bounce back game for CU. Uh, in a way, I think perhaps as it relates to this game, what happened last week in Nebraska is probably not the worst case scenario. Uh, probably gives this op this team the best opportunity or this coaching staff the best opportunity to get these young men's attention. In contrast to a year ago, 
when CU had done the improbable, going to TCU, winning that football game, at home against Nebraska, I remind folks, blowing them out and feeling themselves as if they had arrived and being sobered by that CSU experience, not understanding how important that game was to those young men up in Fort Collins. I think there's a different mindset and sense of urgency about this program at this moment. So I think that actually bodes well for CU, who quite frankly is a more talented team than their opponent this week, bottom line. And so we'll see what happens, but I kind of like the fact that we're going in with the world. Uh, I won't go as far as to say Chad Brown included, but with a lot of, uh, a lot of people doubting uh, their ability to, to get it done. Again, I will state unequivocally, I want CU to win every single game they play. So I uh, certainly will never be included in the category of haters. Um, but just as we saw late Tuesday night and Wednesday, folks can look at the exact same thing on television, speaking about the presidential debate, and walk away with very opposing viewpoints and very differing takeaways. We are at a place in our country where I'm not sure if that's true about the presidential debate, but I digress. Continue on. <laughs> well, at least people are willing to say that they had very opposing viewpoints on, on that. But we are at a point in our country where we can look at the same thing and walk away with two different sets of facts or takeaways. Um, and again, what you say, there's no untruth to that. But uh, what I would say is there's no untruth to what I would say. Uh, North Dakota State is a lower division foe. Um, Nebraska certainly had their way with the Buffs for the first half. And Nebraska, who is now new to winning ways, one of the more difficult things for a young football team that's new to winning ways to do is to recognize you got to play the full 60 minutes. You got to choke somebody out when you got them down. So Nebraska did not go into full chokeout mode. They thought the game was already won. What, 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 wait a minute. See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. It's the absence of just giving credit to the opposition. You would suggest that that was about a young Nebraska football team. Why? I'm not certain. Why wouldn't one suggest that CU's defense, as it did the week prior, made proper adjustments and got done what they needed to get done? Two things can be true at once. Two things can be true at once. I think both those things are true. I think the halftime adjustments have been good, and there's, there's no doubt about that. It shows up statistically. It shows up when you watch the tape. Um, but having called a number of Nebraska games over the last couple of years um, and seeing the inexperience that they had on the field and the lack of winning ways, having been a part of football a long time, that's one of the more difficult things for a newly winning team to be able to accomplish is to play the full 60 minutes. It's very easy for guys to be like, oh, we got this, we won, and turn it down a bit. That's true for everybody in football, not just for Nebraska versus CU, but all across the board, high school, NFL, and college. Okay, the game itself. We've talked around the game. You've mentioned CSU being a lesser talented team. I would think top to bottom, the roster does not have the same number of stars behind it that CU has. But there's something to be said for a more homegrown approach to roster building and a more mercenary approach. And I know some folks push back on my mercenary claim, but these guys up at CU, there's a bit of a mercenary feel to this. Um, talented guys, but a mercenary feel. For whatever reason, it did not work out financially, did not work out on the field, did not work out uh, behaviorally, wherever they were. So they came to see you because the door was open and there's a possibility to be with Coach Prime and all the things that come with that. So we bring in guys who have no idea of what CU Nebraska means to someone like me or you. We bring in guys who have no idea what this rivalry with CSU means to someone like me or you. So now we're asking them to play these emotional rivalry games with no background on it, with no understanding to it. Hey guys, for, for both of you, and I know in a world where guys are transferring all over the place. Maybe rivalries don't matter the way they did. And the Nebraska rivalry is huge to Colorado football fans. But has it kind of been impressed on you that CSU, it's everyone's neighbors, right? Everybody's 
got family that went there, and so that in this state, Colorado and Colorado State, who wins that against bragging rights? Have you guys felt that yet this week? Um, you know, the, a rivalry is a rivalry. You know, obviously we're new to it, but, you know, the governor impressed the importance of all the rivalries that we have. So when it's important to the governor, it's important to us. So that's how we approach it. Yeah, basically saying what BJ just said, the governor makes it a big deal, so it's a big deal to us. So we just making sure we prepare, prepare, prepare. So when, when it's time to play, we're ready to play. So while CSU comes in with extra motivation, while Nebraska comes in with extra motivation, do our players come in with the motivation that matches the opponent on the other sideline? Mm -hmm. So also the football game is going to be determined by who comes in with more juice, who comes in with a higher passion level to play. And if you are dispassionate about where you're playing because you're essentially a mercenary and the, the name and the logo on the helmet versus the guys on the other sideline, I think that makes it a bit of more of an uphill climb. Listen, I, I don't I don't disagree with you. But once again, Chad, it's always been the case. Mm -hmm. You didn't come to see you to play against CSU. I didn't come to see you to play against CSU. The majority of our roster were from places other than Colorado. And so there was nothing that Coach Mack could do or Coach Neuheisel or Coach Barnett or any coach can convince a young kid of to, to to the level of matching their hatred or intensity for this game there's that it's, it's just not realistic we beat them because we were better than them not because we were more inspired to play them that's not news that's going to be the case this saturday the point i just made however is i think given what took place at nebraska gives this coaching staff an opportunity to penetrate the minds and the hearts of these these players in a different way balances out that that imbalance a little bit but that's that's why i hate the game i don't like the game because there is no way you can we all were mercenaries in that context it's just a different day and age where we have this thing called the portal where the mercenary the definition of mercenary is even more extreme but no one came to colorado no one comes to colorado to play this game for the players, if it went away, no one would notice, wouldn't matter. And so that's just another hurdle that the Buffs have to overcome in playing against Colorado State. It's, it is that way, and it's always been that way. I'll push back a little. There are certainly folks in state, kids in state, who this game has some importance to. Um, and every coach I've ever been around has talked about the importance of winning the state whether you're Miami in Florida and beating Florida State in Florida, whether you're Texas A&M and you got to beat Texas Tech, you got to find a way to win your state. You want to win your conference, but you also want to win your state. And I'm pretty sure you and I have both heard Coach Mack talking about winning the state. So I think there's something to be said for that. Let's keep it on the field. The Buffs averaging 37.5 rushing yards a game. Unfortunately, that is bottom, bottom in the nation. And Dylan Hayden looks like he's uh, – Dallin Hayden, I'm sorry. He looks like he's banged up, won't play. Rams defense has given up almost 150 yards rushing per game. Can the Buffs running game get right in this game? Is that a possibility? Yeah, I think it's a possibility. In, in fact, I, I, I expect to see – listen, again, we went – a week ago, this past Saturday, we went against what I think is – it's going to arguably be one of the best defensive fronts in the country. Two of the top interior defensive linemen play for Nebraska. We're going from that to uh, a Colorado State team that probably don't have that kind of prowess in, on their uh, you know, defensive front. It's an opportunity. But more than just the rushing yards, as we've said on this show, as I've said on this show, I, I want to see a complementary attack offensively where you can stay on schedule, where you can get to second and six. If we end up with 85 rushing yards, and those were really impactful 85 rushing yards, not a 65-yard run and uh, you know an average of two and a half yards from thereafter, but an effective rushing attack where we could actually use it to complement our skill set on the perimeter. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, so if see, you can get to that, that's what matters in this game, and I think this is a great opportunity for the Buffs to have some success in that round. 
All right, let's flip it to the other side. Colorado State's given up one sack this season. I think they only gave up 12 all of last year. That offensive line plays well together as a group. The CU pass rush, a bit lacking in spots the first two games. Can they handle what appears to be one of the better offensive lines that the bus will see this year? We'll see. We'll see about that. I'm Again, I, I don't know. I don't know what – I mean, that's impressive statistically. I don't know exactly what that means. I don't think – I don't think Texas was necessarily held at bay and this line didn't control. The game. <laughs> so I, I, again, sometimes stats can, can be funny in terms of the story they actually tell. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, there was that kid who really tortures that receiver who had the big game against us last week. I think he's out this week. That's certainly not going to bode well for Colorado state, but to your point, your larger point, Chad, we, again, just like our offensive line, our defensive front have to figure out a way to manufacture pressure. Uh, and we'll see. I think this, again, is an opportunity for us to get right on that score. I think mixing up the defense, playing a little less, because if you remember last year's game, they really, really hurt us with these crossing routes, mm -hmm. uh, with, with all the traffic inside and allowed receivers to run free because of, of they, they did a great job of creating – uh, traffic, particularly in an intermediate middle of the field. And so I think to play some zone, to mix that up a little bit, make it a little bit less predictable for this offense. Uh, and again, I can't remember the young man's name. I made note of it earlier. Uh, Horton, I'm thinking, I can't remember, but he's, if not in the game, then that certainly doesn't bode well for him. I'm not afraid of Colorado State's attack and what they offer. I am more concern about and would be in paying closer attention to our attitude if we go in there with the right mindset chad we win the game I, you know it's not that complex if we go in with the right mindset we win the game uh and i think once again what happened in nebraska last week gives us a great opportunity to go in with the right mindset it does become alarming however if this coaching staff cannot corral this team given what took place and we fall short at, at, at in Fort Collins. Now things are, are different, but I don't anticipate that being the case. As it stands, we were favored to beat North Dakota State. We did. We were, fa we were underdogs against Nebraska. We lost. I don't see any reason to – I think we're nine-point favorite at, on the road at Colorado State. I think we'll be just fine. Okay. We shall see. And in games like this, rivalry games – I'm sure CSU has held some plays back the first two games of the season. They will have some special plays. Jay Novell, I think, really wants to stick it to Deion Sanders. It got personal last year with the mama talk and all that. Um, so I think there's some leftover my feelings. Mama. Don't talk about my mama. Right. There's some Don't leftover feelings from all of that. Um, and I, I feel Coach Prime, man. You, If you allude somehow Marsha Brown did a bad job raising me, we got some we, words need to be exchanged. We got, we got some things we got to talk about, bro. So yes, I completely sir. feel that. Um, just to speak to this rivalry real quick on the field. Uh, 1992, you were no longer there. It was my senior year. Um, I had a really rough start to the season. I broke my hand, shattered a bone in my hand four or five days before our opener, had a big cast on one hand. I go down to stretch right before we uh, and warm ups for the CSU game. I end up slipping a disc in my back. Um, so they give me you know, some painkillers to go out there and play. And it's taken me a while to get loose. I can't remember who the tight end was from CSU, but I got a club on one hand. I can barely stand up. I'm in so much pain. In the first series or two, I got to admit, this kid gave it to me. And he's like, Chad Brown, you're supposed to be all American. You well, what ain't. Does that mean? Come on. I need more. I need to be more descriptive. What, what happened? It was only two possessions. What happened to you, man? What did he do to you? Uh, I think they ran off tackle. He blocked me. Um, I think I had him in man coverage. He he shook me. It was a it was two series of a Ram versus Buffalo ass kicking. That must you have know, been early in the game before I sat down to tune in because I've never seen that happen to you. Chad. Well, so they took two series okay. and I finally got loosened okay. up. But he was okay. talking big noise and he came in with that little brother attitude. You're not so tough. You're not so bad. I didn't say anything. I just kept trying to get loose and finally got loose. And, you know, the superior talent took over. But I tell that story 
just to speak to the chip on the shoulder that they're going to come into this game with, the mindset they're going to come into this game with. And if there is a slow start by the bus, that allows that mindset to go from a hope to be. We should have murdered them guys. So we have to start fast to quell any hopes, any possibility of this thing becoming what it was last year, where the bus had to come back late. Because I think the Rams would say, well, we're not going to allow you to come back this year. We're a better, smarter football team. We won't allow that to happen. Because that's how they're viewing it this year, that they allowed mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. to happen last year. Is there any evidence that they're a better, smarter football team? No, there isn't. But I'm saying what they're thinking. And I, I tell that story to give you a, a bit of the mindset of what was happening. As soon as he found success against me, then all my accolades were bullshit. The fact that I was all American, that he was like, you're overrated, you suck. He was giving it all to me because he was having his way until I That's finally right. got loose and started catching That's his right. That, so reality set in. Reality set in at some point and regardless of how he was feeling when he had some success early in the game, he got his ass kicked. Oh, man. That's, oh, I don't cuss. I don't, I'm, so, I'm sorry, people. I had apologize. Okay. Had apologies today. That's me. That's me. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> do you care to give a score prediction before we wrap this thing up? Listen, man, he's going to win the football game. Okay. Right? And, and listen, I'm taking the over on the points. I don't know what the number is, but I'm guessing it's somewhere in the high 20s. I'm saying we'll win this game 38-21, 38-17, something like that. Okay. I think we get loose offensively, and uh, it almost happened in the first game of the season, uh, but for a couple of drop passes and, and miscues, um, we had 42 points or so. We we stunk it up in Lincoln. I, think, I, I do think that crowd and that environment – really impacted the beginning of that game and we could not or not get our footing get get our footing going thereafter this you know I, I, I listen again I, we should win the game we're a better team we are more talented uh so that's my prediction Chad. i'm going now i don't want to listen i listen look bro look it's thursday uh i still got a lot a lot of a lot of things to do with and you know I, don't disapp don't upset the next two days for me. But just I know you. I know you. I, I know. got the most winning this thing, so you can relax. You can take a okay. deep breath. All right, all right, bro. I just, but I think the lofty score total for the buffs that you listed doesn't happen because I think there is going to be more of a focus on establishing some balance. So it'll be less of a slinging around the yard kind of game with a little bit more ball control more concerted effort to run the football, particularly against the Rams defense that isn't very good at defending the run. Um, so I see that bringing the score down a bit. So let's call it uh, 27 for the Buffs, uh, 20 for the Rams. Um, but the Buffs have control of this because they're trying to control the pace of the game, they're trying to run the ball a bit more. So while the Rams are – Close from a score perspective, they never really grasped control as Nebraska did, particularly in the first half last week. Okay. All right. And by the way, man, I was so excited to come on the show this week uh, that uh, I noticed in the the way I the way I spell type my name, man, it's Charles Johnson. <laughs> and so, you know, I just want everyone to know that's a reflection of my excitement. <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad I wanted to get on and just get at Chad a little bit for bringing me down last week after oh. that game. So uh, I'll be Charles Johnson today. How about right. that? I, I like the excitement level. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that we both got the Buffs winning. I like that I feel stronger about this prediction than I did about last week's prediction. I knew Nebraska and Matt Rule would give the Buffs a lot to handle, and that was certainly the case. Um, looking forward to watching this one. Before we go, man, I got to hey, – AX, I, 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 listen, man. X is our, our world-class award-winning. I think this guy's been nominated for several awards for his production prowess, and we got the best. Um, I need I need to – I'm people sending me stuff on, on social media, so I got to get I got to get up to speed on my talk tick huh? and my tweeter, man. What? I need to get some, some stuff going there. I need to get on talk tick and tweeter no, 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 so no, that no. I can – balance some of this madness out that's happening in the social media 
uh, as it relates to our buffs. So I know X is going to take care of me there. My man, appreciate top, you. Top tick and tweeter. That's what you're going to do? Top tick? Top Face face match? Top tick. I said top tick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on, on that note. <laughs> Give me on top tick and tweeter. So I can say I can speak to the people. All right, that's all. Pastor J, keep killing it, keep doing your thing. We love you for being a part of the show. Lock and Co. That smoky charred stuff I had at Sushi Den's rooftop party was off the chain. And then you you promised CJ that that's you were going to get on Amazon, and use that twenty touchdown code to get yourself some Journey Spice. Journey Spice is coming today. I'm doing it. What's what's my what's my code? Twenty touchdown. Give me the the, the logic behind twenty touchdown. What what twenty? 20% off. Oh, I get 20% off too? Yeah. Oh my goodness, man. I'm about to have a spice of a party here, bro, on Amazon. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward, forward to hearing about the food. I'm looking forward to the Buffs victory on Saturday. I'm looking forward to getting together with you after that victory and breaking it all down for the folks who love the Black and Gold Brothers podcast. Love it.